All right, Simpkins Physics Corner, Centripetal Force Part 2. In this case, we're going to be looking at this second of the big three. And this is saying, write an equation for the minimum coefficient of friction needed to maintain circular motion for any horizontal rotating platform with friction. It's basically like if you imagine um, a disc that's spinning with a mass on top of it. And I'll kind of draw a picture for you here, kind of like if it was a, a ring like that and you had some mass on top of it and the whole thing was spinning around. Uh, that's what we mean by a horizontal rotating platform. So if we consider the forces acting there, this is going to be our mass on the edge, and it's spinning um, kind of in the z-axis. You want to think about that, or it's, it's coming towards us at this very moment right here. The forces acting would, of course, be the force of gravity. The surface of that platform would be pushing up. That would be your normal force. And the thing keeping it from sliding off, you can imagine you'd spin it slow. And if you spun it faster and faster, eventually it would be spinning so fast that it would fly tangent because there wouldn't be sufficient friction. So this is saying what's the minimum coefficient of friction needed, meaning how much friction do we need to keep this thing doing circular motion. So we need some force of friction acting towards the middle of this circle. You can imagine this entire circle as it's spinning around like this. Uh, so what that means for this problem is that the force of friction is the centripetal force. What is the centripetal force? It's the force of friction. And then, of course, in the vertical dimension, the normal force is going to be balanced with or equal to the force of gravity. All right, so let's go ahead and expand these equations a little bit. The normal force then is going to be equal to mg, all right, because fg is equal to mg by our definition. Over here, the force of friction is mu times fn. And of course, we know that fc is equal to mv squared over r, because f equals ma, and ac is v squared over r. So now we have these two separate expressions, and we're going to go ahead and do substitution just like we did in the first problem. And the, what, the, way, the way we're going to focus on this is shooting for that mu. So we're going to solve for that mu by itself. Mu equals mv squared over r times the normal force. And again, the fractions are going to be a little bit tricky. Actually, it's not going to be too bad at all, right? Because we plugged in the normal force. It's going to, we're going to divide both sides by fn. It goes down. And actually, this turns out to be quite simple because it's just mv squared over r times mg. Now, you may notice there's an m in both the numerator and the denominator, so those are going to go ahead and cancel. And our final answer here is going to be v squared over rg. turns out that this is going to be the expression for the minimum coefficient of friction needed for any object going around on a horizontal platform, as long as it's at a constant circular speed there. So I've given my students some numbers to work with. Let me go grab those numbers. And those numbers here are 0.288 revs per second and 2 meters. And so the only thing you have to keep in mind here is when you're doing this equation with mu equals v squared over r uh, times g, the v, of course, is your tangential velocity, which should be in meters per second. So this 0.288 revs per second needs to get converted into the tangential velocity. That's actually equal to your frequency. So there's a couple ways you can do that. One of the straightforward ways is tangential velocity is 2 pi r over t. And since frequency is 1 over the period, um, velocity can also be calculated by 2 pi r times f. And we have our f right there. Uh, so you can go ahead and throw those in. We have 2 pi times the radius times our frequency. And if we drop that into our calculator, you can check it that you can just finish these calculations on your own as you do this. But that would get you a velocity of 3.619 meters per second. And then when you plug that in up here, it's going to be that number squared divided by r, which is 2, times 9.8. And our final answer there, our mu, is going to be 0.668. Uh, and that doesn't get a unit because it's just mu, a coefficient of friction, a.k.a. just a number. And we're just going to keep on rolling and go right to the third one here. So this is saying, write an equation for the orbital speed of a moon of mass m orbiting a planet of mass big M at orbital radius r. All right, so if we have some big planet and some little tiny moon and it's orbiting around, we're going to assume a somewhat circular orbit. And that orbital radius, when we say that, what we're talking about is the distance between the centers of mass of the two planets. There'll be occasions where you'll be given the distance above a certain planet and then you'll also need the radius of that planet itself. You have to add those two together to combine to be your orbital radius or your r in all of our gravity equations. But in this case, we're just going to make it one big number. We're going to make that equal to r. All right, so it's saying what is the orbital speed? So this moon has to have some tangential velocity, 
because the force of gravity is pulling it towards the center of this path or the centers of mass of these two objects are attracting one another. So there's this force in this direction and its velocity is going tangent. And so there's kind of this battle going on there. Uh, but that means you have to have a, a fast enough speed so that you don't get pulled in towards this planet. And if you're in a stable orbit, that speed is dialed right in. So let's talk about the circular motion of this object. When we say, what is the centripetal force? The centripetal force acting on it is the force of gravity. Now, we know a lot of things about the force of gravity. Um, we know a couple different expressions. But for this one, because we have the mass of the two objects, that's kind of a, a tip of the hand to tell us that, yes, mv squared over r is the centripetal force expression. But fg is going to be big G mm over r squared. Now, let's take a pause for a second here. You notice that this m and this m are the same. It's the small m. And we're talking about the small m mass of the moon. The moon is the thing making the circle. And so that's why the left side of the equation gets the small m and not the big m. Because the moon is the thing actually doing this circular motion. See how it gets its fc there. So that little mass is going to cancel. And you'll notice one of the radius terms is going to cancel as well. And so it turns out that for any orbiting body, for any satellite, the mass of that satellite actually cancels. That was one of our big ideas from the unit. And this is the reason why. And so if we wanted to write an expression, we just have to take the square root of both sides. And it turns out that for any satellite orbiting a body of big M at orbital radius r, the speed of that satellite would be square root of g big M over r. Now down at the bottom here, I've given you some information. And so if you want to check to see that you can still do algebra, you just go ahead and plug in your values here. So 6.67 times 10 to negative 11 would be your g. The mass, we're talking about the mass of the planet now, is 1.898 times 10 to the 27 kilograms. And that's going to be divided by the orbital radius, which is here. Now, the quick note on that, that's kilometers. And if you're using a standard physics equation, it needs to go in as meters. So that would be 4.20310, a little excessive, but I'll keep them all, times 10 to the 5. That's converting kilometers to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places over here to scientific notation. That's kilometers. But if you go kilometers to meters, you have to multiply it by 1,000, or in other words, 4.20310 times 10 to the 8. That, that, that exponential power has to increase by a factor of 3, or because 10 to the 3 is 1,000. So that's how many kilometers we're going to plug in for our radius. So that's 4.20310. Again, a little excessive on the decimals, but I figured if you got them, keep them. And then we'll go ahead and take a moment to plug that into our calculator. So 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times 1.89 to the 27 divided by 4.20310. Do all that math, take the square root of that, and it looks like we get an enormous answer. But keep in mind, it's a moon flying around Jupiter. Jupiter is pretty big. You better be moving pretty fast if you don't want to crash into it. All right, and so this is a, quite a big number here. I believe I forgot to do something. Always go back and check your work. I uh, forgot to type this exponent 8 in there, which is just a little bit important. So 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, one more shot here, times 1.898 times 10 to the 27 divided by 4.20310 to the eighth power. There we go, got it that time. There we go, that's more like it. It's going to be 17,355. 17, 355, and that's meters per second because we solve for velocity. All right, the next one's pretty quick, actually, so I'll finish with this one for this short video here. Um, this is our last case. The first case, we had normal force is the centripetal force. Then we had the force of friction is the centripetal force. Then we had the force of gravity is the centripetal force. And finally, we have a string, which, of course, the string would be having a force of tension. Now, the crazy thing about these types of problems is that the tension is not towards the center of the circle because we're doing our circle like this. And so part of the string's force, a component of the tension, is going to be our centripetal force. So let's just go ahead and write our expressions. That means FTX is the centripetal force. But that also means that the string is pulling slightly upward. We're going to call that FTY, the Y component of the force of tension. And if we assume that we're going around at a constant height, which is a reasonable assumption since our angle is not changing, that's also going to mean that FTY is equal to FG, because the tension of the string pulling up must be uh, in equilibrium with the force of gravity acting downwards. Now, if you consider the angle that we're talking about here, the angle theta, 
that I picked this one on purpose to help you guys out a little bit. You notice that FTX, the horizontal piece, that would be the adjacent side compared to this angle right there. And the Y component will be the opposite side. And so our standard of using Y sine here works out in X cosine. So FT cosine of that theta is going to be equal to MV squared over R. And FT sine of theta is going to be equal to M times G. All right, so down at the bottom here, I gave you a mass of 0.25 kilograms just to kind of try that out a little bit. And it turns out this problem is a lot easier than I expected uh, because we know the mass, we know the G, and we also know the, the angle theta. So all you have to do to solve for the force of tension here is just say, oh, well, it's mg over sine of theta, which of course can be 0.25 times 9.8 divided by sine of 20. And you just go ahead and drop that in your calculator. So let's see what happens when we do that. Divided by sine of 20. Oops, took the power of 20 for some reason. Getting late in the day here. Divided by sine of 20. And FT is going to be equal to 7.16 newtons. So there you have it. Keep in mind, what is the centripetal force? FC is always equal to mv squared over r, but sometimes it's useful whether the centripetal force is the normal force, the force of friction, the force of gravity, or the force of tension, even a component of the tension. The ideas are the same. You need a force towards the center of a circle in order to do circular motion. And if you have that, you have centripetal acceleration and tangential velocity. The rest is just figuring out what equations tie together, watching your revolutions per second versus radians per second, making sure all of your units are straight there, and you should be uh, good to go for circular motion. So I hope your head doesn't spin too much with circular motion. This is the 50th degrees corner going tangent, signing off.